is the weekend update edition of Main Street Sports Today presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia. I'm Maurice Patton, that's Wade Neely, and we are efforting so that Chris Yao will be visible as well. The three amigos in the Lee Company studios here in Columbia today um, getting ready for the weekend. Um, big show. We will be visiting in the next hour with Nashville Cats coach Dean Kokinos. They just finished up their first full week of preseason practice, getting ready for their April 27th season opener and inaugural. Yeah. Re re-inaugural. Relaunch. Yeah. I'm not, I'm Cats 2.0. Now, now you're onto something. I like that a little bit. 3.0. That's right. My fault. Um, I forgot one. Yeah, um, Cats 3.0 inaugural season opener on April 27th at Municipal Auditorium. So, yeah, we'll be talking to Dean Kikinos in the second hour in our next segment. We will have our weekly visit with a Nashville Sound, Nashville Sound's personnel. Um, and I guess it'll be play-by-play -play announcer Jeff Hem as the Sounds continue their six-game series down in Memphis tonight. They've got a doubleheader starting at five, so we'll be checking in with Jeff. Talking a little Braves, very little Braves in light of what happened yesterday, but um, yeah, we are kind of obligated to talk Braves every day during the baseball season, so we're going to do that. Also, a little Astros. Very, very little. little. Yep. <laughs> Same same boat. But there is a um, there was an interesting development in Major League Baseball here in the last 24 hours, and I want to kind of get to that for just a second. So we'll touch on that later in the show. Um, I think there has been white smoke out of Lexington. And it's that's an important distinction because it's not smoke from burned couches. It's not smoke, but, but it – it could very well be as the week as we as the sun goes down tonight and as we descend into the weekend. Yeah, be be on high alert in Lexington. You know, well, I mean, they say you can't go home, and I'm not sure if Mark Pope can. <laughs> they they have not rolled out the blue carpet for him. Let's put it that way. No, it has not been a uh, a pleasant uh, 24 hours, especially if you dabble into social media by any stretch if you're uh and and he, new pro he, man. He, he probably shouldn't yeah i would probably steer clear of socials uh, i will tell you day. who else probably shouldn't it's mitch barnhart no well, we'll talk more about that later in the show it's plenty to talk about so um yeah glad Which, you mentioned that i got a, a crazy theory uh that i've heard getting floated around on the internet that i'll bring up uh I, at the appropriate time. At the appropriate time. And I, as, as soon as I said that, really, when you're talking about Kentucky basketball, it's kind of like Alabama football. Nothing is really too crazy, far-fetched or mm -hmm. too crazy, but I'll, I'll make sure to bring that in as well later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Y'all you still efforting, I'll take it? You're uh, muted. You you're, you're muted. Can you hear? That is the question. Try Do you not need to talk louder? I don't know if you need to talk louder or not because producer Mark says we are way too loud. So I am. Um, yeah, y'all are way too loud. I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Just it's, it's Friday, man. We're excited. What, what more yeah. do you want from us? <laughs> well, we'll get all that squared away. But like you said, Mo, it's going to be a good show. And uh, <laughs> theoretically, well, the the content of the show is going to be great. Okay, and once no, we get out, I, I can't hear anything. Once we get a few ear. little, there we go. Hitches in our giddy up, kind of mm. as it were, squared away. I think we're going to be situated just fine. Well, uh, I hope so. We'll see. And then, we'll obviously, see. we'll get into the the weekend highlights. It's going to be a big sports weekend. There's a lot to dive into. Kind of a feel good Friday, honestly. It is windy as all get out right now, mm -hmm. but there are promises, borderline promises from the meteorologists of the world that this weekend is going to be a gorgeous one here in Middle Tennessee. You know, Bree Smith is my girl. I watch her every night at 10 on News Channel 5. Shameless plug there. I don't mind saying it. But she said, <laughs> she said, y'all are getting to the 80s this weekend. And once you get there, you're going to stay there. And I made that distinction because I won't be here. Well, we'll talk more about hopefully that. Hopefully we can keep later. keep that uh, in your uh, absence next week. But Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Going to be a great weekend. Looking forward to it. Um, speaking of the weekend, 
Yeah. Hey, there we go. There we go. Hello, I Dr. Yeah. I have no idea why that worked, but I didn't change anything on my end, just on yours. Well, I don't know what needed changing because I ain't touched nothing. Because oh, okay. I don't touch nothing. Because I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> it appears yeah, we, he, fix it, we figured it out. So some sort of trickery and wizardry he just pulled right there. Well, you know, when you know what you're doing, you can do that kind of thing. Wow. The crazy things, I don't know that he necessarily knew, but we were, we're in crunch time, so we're just... Yeah, that we're grasping at straw. Sometimes desperation is the, the best motivator. Hello. That is true. <laughs> With that said, um, I think it's probably time to wade into Wade, huh? <laughs> Yesterday's results, such as they were, and this weekend schedule on the rundown. This is the rundown. Hey, folks, the Friday Rundown is brought to you by Chip Walters of Exit Realty, Bob Lamb & Associates. The Blue Raider Voice also wants to be your trusted advisor in real estate. So contact Chip at 615-542-1915 or visit his website at choosechip.net. Chip Walters, proud to support youth sports across Middle Tennessee. Very limited high school schedule on Thursday. A handful of baseball games, including Oakland defeating Smyrna 7-4, Page with a 7-1 win over Franklin. Ross viewed down good pasture 11-1, and it was Tullahoma 10, Stewart's Creek 4. On the small diamond, date, uh, Station Camp defeated Canoe Lake of Pennsylvania 12-0. It was Davidson Academy 15, good pasture 8. Wow, shoot out there. Nashville Christian with a 14-3 win over Ezell Harding, and Station Camp defeated Scohegan of Maine 9-3. On the pitch, Donaldson Christian's boys defeated Mount Juliet Christian 7-0. Ezell Harding with a 3-1 win over Clarksville Academy. Good Pasture 1, Friendship Christian nothing. Laverne 3-0 over Overton. Stewart's Creek 5, Mount Juliet nothing. Loretta 1, Wayne County nothing. Webb School 7, Middle Tennessee Christian nothing. Hendersonville 9, White House nothing. And Smyrna 6, Wilson Central nothing. Wow. On the, <laughs> right, yeah, it uh, if you couldn't, well, I guess if you can't score, you can't win, right? Um, Major League Baseball. Our teams did not fare well on Thursday. Braves fall to the Mets 16-4. Astros fall to the Royals 13-3. And at AutoZone Park, the Sounds fell to Memphis 6-1. Just no luck for the uh, any of our baseball uh, none, none. squads yesterday. But today's a new day. And speaking of today, it's time to get into the schedule. Uh, we are going to attempt to play some of these games. You may still just triple check before you head on out because I know some fields are uh, pretty waterlogged uh, as this week has continued. But buckle up. 2 p.m. first pitch today between Knoxville Catholic and Murfreesboro Central Magnet. 4.30 now. Tonight, White's Creek is going to travel to Cane Ridge. Waverly is at Creekwood this evening. Centennial will visit Father Ryan. Franklin Road Academy plays host to MBA. Maplewood travels to Lawson tonight. Green Hill is at Smith County. Riverdale visits Brentwood. Summertown is at Davidson Academy. Portland visits Gallatin tonight. Collinwood will be at Santa Fe. Joe Burns scheduled to travel to Springfield. Westmoreland is going to head north to Franklin Simpson, Kentucky. Uh, Out-of-state matchup there. Uh, those games, these games now beginning at 530, including that one. Murfreesboro Central Magnet will play Science Hill tonight. Clarksville Academy is at Clarksville Northeast. University School of Nashville is at DCA at 6 o'clock tonight. Richland is also uh, on the road tonight at Fayetteville at 6. Nolansville will visit Stewart's Creek. Cheatham County is at West Creek. And a 6-15 start tonight as East Nashville will take on Hancock County. At 6.30, Boat Prep is at Battleground Academy. Summit goes to Columbia Central. Columbia Academy hosts East Hickman. Page is at CPA. Clarksville is at Dixon County. And Fairview plays host to Cullioca. Upperman is at Green Hill. Overton is at Harpeth. Hickman County is at Hume Fog. Kirkwood welcomes Greenwood, Kentucky. Shovel is at Lawrence County. Giles County is down over at Lincoln. Down over. Mm -hmm. Down over. Down over. We know what you meant. I figured it out after I said down. Well, I mean, <laughs> no down. It's down from here. And it's over. It's over from there. So it's, you know, it's got a little confusing for a second. It's okay. <laughs> Lauderdale County of Alabama will be up at Loretta. <laughs> 
There we go. <laughs> Forest is at Spring Hill. Ravenwood's at Station Camp. White House Heritage goes to White House. Independence at Beach. Harp. I'm sorry. Ravenwood Station Camp. White House Heritage and White House at seven. Also at seven. Independence at Beach. John Overton's at Harpeth Hall. In not in baseball. Nope. Uh, uh, well, maybe in baseball. I don't know. Nope. <laughs> Harpeth Hall doesn't play baseball. I can't mm -hmm. imagine. Uh, Rockville is at Siegel at seven. Um, is it my turn? It is. Okay. Um, Saturday baseball, nine o'clock. Powell plays Murfreesboro Central. I'm sorry, nine thirty. Powell plays Montgomery. Uh, nine thirty. Powell plays Murfreesboro Central. Ten thirty. Clarksville Northwest is at Gallatin. At twelve noon, it's Christ Presbyterian at Creekwood. Also, Franklin is at Mount Juliet. Daniel Boone plays Murfreesboro Central. East Nashville plays Rockwood. Blackman is at Wilson Central at 12 noon. At 1, Lipscomb Academy is at Pope Prep. Also at 1, Smyrna is at Riverdale. At 2 o'clock, Green Hill hosts Clarksville. Kirkwood goes to Greenwood, Kentucky. And Bowling Green Davidson Academy is at Loretto. Clarksville Academy is at Mount Juliet Christian. Wayne County plays at Mount Pleasant. Rockvale hosts Stewart's Creek. At 2.30, Overton goes up to Father Ryan. Jackson Christian is at Middle Tennessee Christian at 2.30. At 3, Warren County travels to Gallatin. At 4, Columbia Academy hosts Portland. 5 o'clock, Silverdale Academy out of Chattanooga plays at Middle Tennessee Christian. At 6.30, Hendersonville is at Friendship Christian. Also at 6.30, Richland goes down to Lawrence County. Um, times undetermined on Saturday, Heritage Christian of Alabama is at Eagleville, and Cookville is at Rossview. Schedule for today. Now we go to softball action as Taft, Illinois visits Station Camp. That game is already underway as we speak. Also just getting underway, East Nashville and Smyrna again set for, uh, were scheduled to begin at 2 p.m. Uh, Bishop Chattered out of Indiana is set to take on Brentwood Academy at 4 o'clock tonight. Independence and Eagleville will get it on this evening. Creekwood and Forest will tangle. Macon County will take on Friendship Christian. White House visits uh, Rockvale as St. Cecilia Academy travels to Grace Christian Franklin. That game begins at 4.30, as does Friendship Christian at Lipscomb Academy. Five o'clock window, Richland is at Columbia. Liberty Creek is on the road at DCA tonight. Loretto is at Zion Christian. 5.30 start times now for Page at Centennial. Bishop Chattered again in action versus this time Cheatham County. Also at 5.30 tonight, Green Hill versus Columbia Academy. Wilson Central versus Independence. Lincoln County will take on Nolensville. Siegel will host Riverdale tonight. Love this one, folks. A 550 first pitch between Clarksville Northwest at Clarksville. Uh, just 550. 550. Not 545, no. not 530, not, not six. six. Just 550. So uh, buckle up. That'll be a good one again. Clarksville Northwest at Clarksville. And uh, 6 o'clock tonight, Cornersville is uh, meeting Eagleville. And at 630 tonight, it'll be Smyrna versus Stewart's Creek. At 7, White House and Carterville will play. Forest and Brentwood also at 7, as well as Brentwood Academy and East Nashville. Creekwood, Hendersonville, Macon County, Joe Burns, Carnes, Rockville, East Nashville and Cheatham County at 8.30. Columbia Academy and Nolensville also at 8.30. Uh, Wilson Central at Ezo, and Ezo Harding, Green Hill, Lincoln County. Stewart's Creek's at Joe Burns. Nashville Christian is at uh, takes on Carnes. And Providence Christian is at Cannon County. On Saturday... At 9 a.m., it's Creekwood and, Brent, Creekwood and Brentwood, Brentwood Academy in Cheatham County, Gorham, Maine, and Station Camp. It says at Gorham, Maine, but probably not. Uh, Forest and Hendersonville, Collierville, Rockville, Carnes, and White House, uh, as well as at 1030 East Nashville and Bishop Chatard. Sure. Of Indiana, Wilson Central, Eagleville, Ezo Harding, Independence, Lincoln County, Columbia Academy, Marshwood, Maine, and Station Camp at 1 o'clock. Uh, also at 1030 is Green Hill, Nolensville. Going back to 1 o'clock, Eagleville, Riverdale, Columbia at Shovel, and Times Unknown for White House and Carnes. On Sunday, it's Blackman at Community at 3 and Riverdale at Oakland, Oakland at 3. Boy, soccer action today at 5 o'clock. Providence Christian plays at Columbia Academy. Also at 5, Tullahoma is at Murfreesboro Central. At 5.30, Ezell Harding goes to Cane Ridge. 6 o'clock, first touch for Huntington at Clarksville Northeast. 
also Franklin County at Lawrence County, Martin Luther King hosting Montgomery Bell Academy. Giles County is at Spring Hill at 630. Christ Presbyterian Academy goes to Father Ryan. Also, Henry County is at Kenwood. Dixon Academy is at Zion Christian and no. Okay. Dixon Christian is at Zion Christian at 630. There we go. Another six o'clock start as Wilson Central at Gallatin at seven. White House is at Beach. Page goes to Brentwood. Coffee County hosts Columbia Central. Dixon County is at Fairview. Riverdale taking on visiting Blackman. Rockvale goes to Siegel and Macon County is at White House Heritage. On Saturday, Father Ryan plays at Brentwood. That's a seven o'clock start. That rounds out the preps. Let's get into pros. NBA action tonight. The Grizzlies, uh, I believe it's their home finale tonight, will host uh, LeBron and company. Lakers desperate for a win. That Ooh. game will begin at 7 p.m. on Valley Sports South. Uh, Grizzlies back in action. Uh, yeah, uh, I stand corrected. They immediately get a home game versus how uh, how forgetful of me. They get the maybe I just wanted to forget the fact they have the defending champs coming in. The Nuggets will be at the Grindhouse at 2:30 on Sunday. That game can also be seen on Valley Sports South. Doubleheader this weekend, as it were, for the Preds, beginning tonight with a 7:30 puck drop in Chicago versus the Blackhawks. Game can be seen on Valley Sports South. Black, uh, Blue Jackets will visit Smashville tomorrow night. Anybody got a start time handy on that? I'm Blue assuming, Jackets and Preds, is that what you said? I believe uh, tomorrow. I would assume they're playing a night game tonight. They're going to play a night game tomorrow. As soon as I say that, of course, it'll be – Blue the, Jackets and Preds, 7 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you, Mo. It'll yeah. be a 7 p.m. puck drop tomorrow night. Uh, also can be seen on Valley Sports South. MLB action today. Braves at Marlins, 6-10 is your first pitch. Game can be seen on Valley's. Rangers at Astros tonight, 7-10. First pitch game can be seen – on MLB Network. Tomorrow, Astros will play first, but only by a little bit. They begin at 3.05 in that game two versus the Rangers. Game can be seen on FS1. Braves at Marlins tomorrow uh, at 3.10. If you're one of the few people that can actually find, get Valley Sports these days, you'll be able to watch it there. Sunday, the Braves are at the Marlins at 12.40. Insert comment about Valley's here. Uh, Sunday, also Rangers at Astros. That game can be seen on Astros uh, local TV or MLB TV beginning at 110. Wrapping it up, the Sounds are in action all weekend long at Memphis. We'll talk more Sounds in this show. They begin tonight at 5 o'clock, 5.05, excuse me. That's a double dip. Double dip tonight. Thank you, guys. Saturday will be a 3.05 first pitch, and they will uh, wrap up the weekend at 1.05 on Sunday. Again, all those games being played over in Memphis. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the rundown. As usual, your top story is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly out in Neely's Mill here in Columbia. Be sure and check out their delicious daily deli lunch options, as well as their hand-cut meats. And everything is cost plus 10% at the cash register. Piggly Wiggly, Neely's Mill, Columbia bringing you our top story. And yeah, we had Chris Hughes, we had um, Nick Harvey from the Nashville Nighthawks on here a few weeks ago in anticipation of the 2025 American Flag Football League season, which was going to begin on April 27th, actually, with four teams, Nashville, Boston, Dallas, and Las Vegas. Well, the league put out a release yesterday evening Reading here, the AFFL is committed to delivering the best possible experience for our fans, players, and coaches. After thoughtful consideration and in consultation with our partners, we have made the decision to launch our inaugural men's and women's professional seasons together in the spring of 2025 with more teams, games, and home cities. These strategic changes will create a more competitive and exciting AFFL, which maximizes attendance and viewership and builds on the unprecedented momentum of women's sports. We believe these changes will benefit the long-term growth of the league and further develop a passionate community-oriented fan base. Together, we will realize the tremendous opportunity and excitement surrounding the sport of flag football for years to come. It's a lot of words to say the AFFL is not playing this year. And, you know, uh, I'm checking out this Facebook post, and the top post says it best. 
it stinks for the guys that have been putting in the work. I mean, mm -hmm. it stinks for the fans, of course, but it really stinks for the guys that were uh, really putting, planning to play. Planning to play. <laughs> I mean, you know, we talked about uh, some of the locations uh, that they were potentially going to be traveling to for some of these. Maybe plans have already been made. Uh, Maybe with, tickets have already been bought. Exactly. A lot of both uh, plane and spectator. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I this mean, is this is kind of late in the game to uh, to unfortunately uh, there is another comment here that says, uh, was this released on April 1st. They're kind of hoping it was an April Fool's joke, but sadly, this is not an April Fool's joke. No, no, this was, like I said, this was yesterday. So, um, very intriguing. And you wonder, this is the league's release. Mm -hmm. So, there is something that we don't know. And I'm going to defer to Mr. Minor League Football on well, this. One. I mean, this is this is about as minor league football as it gets. I mean, this is as, it's simple that there wasn't enough money. I mean, you just you get to a point where you start thinking that okay, if we just go ahead and do it, if we build it, they will come. Well, that doesn't always happen, and rarely does it happen. Not does it always happen. It almost never happens. And and really, when you do something like this, don't you have to have enough money to lose it? I mean, I don't, so I can't relate to that concept. But I mean, so the the what I think is a little unique about the AFFL is they are kind of connected to the like the seven on seven NFL like uh not NFL play but they're they're connected to that like Pro Bowl thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really confused how how this could have happened. <laughs> I mean that's what it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense as you know they've been kind of doing a you know American flag football for a long time. They've just not done it at a professional level. All right. I mean, Chris played in this league. This is the league Chris played in with the Mean Machine. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what the problem is here, other than they just didn't have enough money to pay these players. That's that's not a small other than. Sure, <laughs> obviously, but I mean, how did you not know that going into the season? That's what I'm wondering. It. it the, when the finances, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not a, a business guy by any mm -hmm. stretch, but you you pretty much probably are going into this assuming either a, a big loss or you're assuming or, or a small loss or a small or, loss. or a bigger loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that you've had to cancel this close to the season means that either you really uh, over overshot your goal or your target. Something happened with had to have happened financially, right? I mean. I don't think there's any sort of scandal or anything. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm personally not going to dig in the weeds too far to really maybe uh, investigate that realm. We'll leave that for Dr. Yao. But oh, yeah. um, it just seems like, yeah, just did not potentially budget properly. And now that we're so close to the season, almost as if uh, the league office or uh, the potential clients came up and said, hey, well, we're going to need that first, uh, you know, Pay, payroll issued, or we're going to need that first, uh, you know, invoice turned in. Or and some facilities. Similar similar concept, right? I mean, they could have said, hey, you know, yeah. it's, it's about it's, it's two weeks, you know, they're cl ticking the watch. It's two weeks, you know. What, you, what's the Judge Judy meme yeah, or whatever? You, yeah. <laughs> you're, where, where's your paycheck? So it's, right. it, it's obviously unfortunate. Yeah, you hate it for the guys uh, and, and ladies that were really putting in work to, to get prepared for this. And the crazy thing is, as we'll talk uh, – a little bit more about, as we put it, minor league football on this show. How many times we've we seen it? This is a potential stepping stone in the sense that literally it is like the minor leagues. A lot of folks were maybe hoping, hey, if I have a good showing in this season here, maybe I get a random call to join the arena league the next year. Maybe the UFL comes calling the next mm -hmm. year. And then from there, who knows where that really goes. So that is the part that's really ultimately disappointing. Absolutely. Um, so, again, no Nashville Nighthawks on April 27th at the Vanderbilt soccer slash lacrosse facility, unfortunately, because I think we were a little excited about that. But, uh, 
What we can be excited about is when we come back to the Lee Company Studios after this break, we will be joined by Nashville Sounds play-by-play -play announcer Jeff Hamm coming to us from AutoZone Park down in Memphis where the Sounds continue their series. So stay with us here on Main Street Sports today presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia after this. Nashville Sounds baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, firework shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. Whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, when it comes to your performance, don't settle for anything less than excellence. We're proud to announce that Mid-Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic is now Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia, where we are redefining sports medicine and orthopedics. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance's team of expert sports medicine physicians understands the unique demands of your body. TOA Columbia specializes in personalized orthopedic care, offering state-of-the-art treatments for everything from sports injuries to joint replacements. Learn more at toacolumbia.com. With Lee Company Technology, the best handymen are hands-off. Lee Company Techs have been using visual findings and other smart technology tools for years to add transparency and virtually take customers along. You see what we see, whether we're in a crawl space or on a roof. With Lee Company, technology helps us help you. No matter what's happening in the world, or at your house. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods here in Columbia has been outfitting teams, officials, and anybody else from T-ball to college for 50 plus years. Be sure and check them out at 931-388-8060 or online at jonesandlang.com. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods, the look of a winner. Zion Christian Academy, zioneagles.org or 931-388-5731. You can schedule your appointment. Go toward their campus. It is beautiful over there and you're definitely going to want to see it. Again, it's zioneagles.org. Give them a call, 931-388-5731 and schedule your tour today. Custom Stone Handler supplies over 600 distributors and suppliers with quality stone products. Along with River Stone, we produce and distribute over 100 building, landscape, and other bulk products. Our goal is to provide quality products, service, and partnerships to ensure our customers' success. We firmly believe that the measure of any person or company is how they treat other people and customers. Give them a call at 931-490-4990 or visit customstonehandlers.com. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Tennessee. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the TSSAA. Piggly Wiggly, located in Neely's Mill Shopping Center, is Columbia's locally owned and operated Cost Plus 10 grocery store dedicated to serving the community with low prices and smiling faces. Piggly Wiggly offers fresh, hand-cut meats daily as well as daily hot plate lunches from their deli counter. You're certain to see smiling faces and a helping hand when you're here at Piggly Wiggly. Come by and check out our fresh produce, high-quality meats, and more. Down home, down the street, we'll see you at the Pig. The weekend update edition of Main Street Sports today presented by TOA of Columbia. And hail, hail the gang's all here. Maurice Patton, Wade Neely, Chris Yao. And we are now joined by Sounds play-by-play -play announcer Jeff Hem, who got a unanticipated day off earlier this week down in Memphis. Jeff, how's it going, man? It's going well, guys. Hello from Memphis, where it is beautiful, it is sunny, it is dry. It's a good weekend so far here as we kick it off. Is it warm? It's warm enough. It's in the 60s. Yeah, I'll take that, considering we've had plenty of uh, 40s and 50s temperatures in the first two weeks of this season in various cities, including Nashville. So I wouldn't call it hot, but it is warm enough. It's a beautiful day. 
Okay, well, good. Well, hopefully the bats will warm up then after that 6-1 loss last night following the 15-2 win to open the series on Tuesday and again um, the Wednesday rainout. So, you know, you guys have played, what, 14 games now? 11. 11. Okay. Um, what, are we, what are we thinking? What are we feeling about the team 11 games in, or is it still too soon to tell? Well, it's, it's, I, I've had those same conversations with different guys uh, on my pregame show conversations because, as we all know, this is a game built on large sample sizes. And when you have small sample sizes, folks like us still try to draw conclusions. So, yes, I think we are still very early in the season. But, um, you know, the numbers are the numbers. And the, the pitching staff has been terrific. It's been arguably the best staff in all of AAA by a lot of the numbers. And certainly the bullpen is the number one bullpen uh, in all of AAA. And you need that typically early in the year because even when some of the starters are allowed a higher pitch count, um, their efficiency is not always mid-season form. So we've seen some outings where the starters go about 80 pitches or so, um, but don't necessarily eat up a lot of innings with that. So you're leaning on your bullpen usually early in the year and the sounds have had a terrific one. So that's been good. Um, and offensively, um, getting guys on base is not is not the problem. Um, when the nights like last night happen where you only score the one run, um, there's, there's traffic pretty much all night. This is an offense that rarely just gets dominated or goes down one, two, three. So they get a lot of bites at the apple. Um, runners in scoring position, hitting um, has been – what's what's held them back when those have happened uh rick sweet has talked about it that um you know we know that strikeouts are up in baseball just as an aerial view topic and he would say because i've talked to him about it so i feel like i can sort of paraphrase for him he would say that's okay um in certain situations you're down a run eighth inning two outs nobody on you got a power guy at the plate yeah see if you can tie the game you strike out you know, good effort. Um, there have been run scoring opportunities, though, where you really do just want to try to put it in play and see what can happen. Uh, the team did that last Sunday against St. Paul. They won eight to one. They were getting the barrel on everything in the rain here on Tuesday night. They won 15 to two in a game that didn't even finish seven innings. Uh, and then last night was a little bit of a, of a scaling back and, and they had the, the one run late on a homer by Eric Koss. Um, and, and it was overall a more quiet night for the offense. So 11 games in, we've seen a little bit of everything, which is not a big surprise when you've only played 11 games. Um, I think this can be a really good offense. Um, there's just a little bit of fine tuning to be done in certain situations, uh, I think is the way they're, they're analyzing the, the run production so far. Jeff, as you guys kind of get ready to put a bow on this uh, road trip, you also get a nice uh, homestand coming back next week, including um, a couple of nice giveaways, which are always uh, obviously a, a beautiful staple of First Horizon Park. But uh, it would be nice, I presume, to go in with a little momentum into this homestand uh, coming up next week. Well, and they're going to face Omaha, AAA for the Royals, and both the Big League Royals and the AAA Royals are up to a great start. So it looks like the Storm Chasers have a pretty good ball club that we're going to see. It, You know, it's I, I think this week will tell a little bit more about what to look for as the season goes along because the Sounds play the Redbirds 24 times this year. They play them more than anybody else um, that they'll play this year. They play Omaha, just the six, guys, six games. We saw St. Paul last week. That matchup is done. Um, it's an interesting schedule every year because you're in a 20-team league, and so you get these kind of one-off matchups where you see a team and then you don't see them again. So it, when you see Sounds versus Redbirds beyond just the intrastate rivalry, it's sort of like, all right, well, you're going to see these guys periodically over the course of the year. So you know, figure out a way to make sure you can handle them, and that'll tell you a lot about your ball club. But I'm I'm with you. I think. The, the bigger thing that stands out to me um, about the upcoming homestand is not so much the momentum. Um, I think it's the opportunity for the team to get into a little bit of a, a routine. Uh, this is such a routine dominated sport. And you know, they have the three games in Toledo to start. And then the first really three, almost four days of that homestand last week in Nashville, um, the weather affected the pregame work or the batting practice or the delays. Like the weather was just a factor pretty much every day until it got to the weekend. 
Um, now they come to Memphis. Tuesday was wet, even though the game got played. There was limited on-field work. Um, Wednesday morning, they were able to do a little bit on the field after the game had been postponed because the rain had not arrived yet. Um, and then last night was finally a beautiful night with normal pregame work um, and similar now today, except in a six-game series here in Memphis, there are five different game times that are involved. So to the point next week at home, first five days, all night games at 635 and the, the, the finale in the afternoon on Sunday. So this team is two weeks into the season, and yet I would I don't know that you could say they're they're really into a nice routine yet um, of the early work and taking the ground balls and getting the on-field batting practice and all the things that factor in that are easy for folks like us to kind of forget about. I think there hopefully is opportunity mm -hmm. in the days to come for that part to happen. And then I think we'll see the on-field production translate when the pregame work is in a little bit better spot than where it's been. Hey, Jeff, I got to ask you, too. Uh, is this correct? You're a University of Iowa guy. Is that right? I am. You want to talk about Caitlin Clark? I'm ready. No, sir. No, sir. I want to talk about the tweet heard around the world. The Durham Bulls were trolling the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, they scored 28 runs earlier this week, and they simply said, that's as many times as Iowa football scored 28 all season. I mean, that had to cut deep a little bit, right? Well, I'm – uh, where do I start with the what? Durham Bulls and their social media and mm -mm. just the Durham Bulls as a whole? Mm -mm. Um, let's see, what can I say mm -mm. here that won't get me into trouble? Yeah, as, as um, polite as you'd like to be, of course. I yeah, don't think he wants to be it, very polite. <laughs> let me answer it this way. It's just, it's just par for the course that somehow in mid-April, we're what? somehow talking about Iowa football instead of, oh, I don't know, back-to-back -back Final Fours and National Championship runner-ups and the number one pick in the NBA, the WNBA draft coming up next week. But, um, you know, hey, the Durham Bulls do what they do. They, 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 they have a little bit of snark on their social media. I, that's fine. Um, but, you know, I, I can tell you this. I am a, a very happy individual because I'm not thinking about Iowa football. And thinking about <laughs> Iowa football usually makes my head hurt. So um, let's, let's just move on to the next topic. How about that? <laughs> well said and nice, nicely done. That's why you're the best in the biz, Jeff. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, speaking of an, another topic, uh, earlier this week, you guys at, at the Sounds did something really cool with a, a young man signing uh, Lane Caldwell to a season-long contract. What, t tell us a little bit about Lane and, and what brought you know the Sounds, obviously, to do something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a really cool day at the ballpark last uh, Saturday afternoon. We had a meet-the-team luncheon where season ticket members could come and interact with the team. And then we introduced Lane, um, who, to your point, Chris, signed a, a season-long contract to be an honorary member of the Sounds. Uh, we've got the Sounds have a great partnership um, with Vanderbilt and Vanderbilt Health uh, and their children's hospital. The, the players do multiple um, appearances and hospital visits, visits there every year. And thankfully, the last few years, um, we've been able to have uh, an honorary player every single year. And Lane has got an, an amazing story. Thankfully, his health is really good right now. He's had his battles um, starting back in October of 2022. Uh, but thankfully, uh, his latest scans have all been cancer free, and we pray that that continues to be the case. But a really um, amazing young man for that, obviously, right then and there, that's enough to make him an amazing guy. But he, he came out last weekend and, and we introduced him and you know, Rick Sweet was up there and they were having him sign the contract. And Rick kind of under his breath just said, hey, would you like to say anything? And, you know, most kids are, no, 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 I'm, I'm okay. Lane, you know, he takes the mic and he thanks everybody and he, he is not afraid, uh, which is not surprising given the challenges that he's had to overcome. Um, but I, you know, I'm not taking any credit on any of this from a sound standpoint. I was just happy to be along for the ride to be around a kid like that. And so he'll be around the team as much as he can uh, coming out to take batting practice and just just be around the guys. I know he said he's thrilled just to have that opportunity to be up close to professional ball players, and uh, I know the team is inspired by his story, so it's going to be a fun friendship that gets formed, and uh, thankfully the Sounds have been able to have an honorary player now for a really post-COVID these last few years, um, you know, usually one individual per season, and so uh, we're looking forward to getting to know Lane a little bit more, but tremendous kid, and a, 
a really powerful moment um, last weekend when he was introduced. And I, I kind of hosted the the luncheon and introduced the players. And then I read, read Lane's bio and I, I had to kind of give myself a second with the lump in my throat, just reading about it. And then everybody stands up and applauds. And, you know, there were, there were not a lot of dry eyes in that room just because of what he's been through. His family was there. You could tell how much joy they had at just getting to be there and that Lane is getting a cool opportunity this year with the sound. So um, thanks for bringing it up, Chris, because that's the kind of stuff that, you know, you just, you, you can't, you, you can't um, really even describe the, the fun and the value and, and just the opportunity that um, the game and the community bring together sometimes. And um, it's really fun to just witness it and, and be close to it uh, from my vantage point. Jeff Hamm, the play-by-play -play voice of the Nashville Sounds, joining us here on Main Street Sports today, presented by TOA of Columbia, as he does on most road trip Fridays. Um, Jeff, this will be the first doubleheader for the Sounds this year. Is that right? As you talked uh, about start, yeah. as you talked about start times being all over the board. So this will be two sevens. Is that the way they do that? Yep, two sevens. Uh, it was supposed to be a 7.05 start, but they moved it up to 5.05, as most teams typically do. So, yeah, two sevens at, at 5.05. Should be fun pitching. Uh, it's Carlos Rodriguez, who's a big-time Brewers prospect, going for the Sounds in game one. And this Memphis rotation is full of Cardinals prospects. Gordon Graceffo is their starter in the first game. And then in the second game, it's Tobias Myers for the Sounds, who had 10 strikeouts his last outing. And another um, Cardinals prospect, Adam Kloffenstein, who was a part of a trade last year at the deadline with the Blue Jays. Cardinals have really tried to reload. We know about Sonny Gray being in St. Louis. They really quickly, between draft picks and waiver claims and trades and then free agent signings, very quickly have tried to reload on some arms. And it, like I said, the Sounds play Memphis 24 times this year. They're always fun matchups. It's the Brewers Cardinals component. It's the Nashville Memphis component and then just the quantity of games. Um, so a, a lot of opportunity to, to see these Redbirds this year. Is this the earliest you can remember Nashville and Memphis playing, Jeff? Uh, we were here pretty early last year, as you say that. Um, you know, <laughs> this I'm going to try not to take us off on tangents with our schedule and our visits this year, guys, because there are, there are parts of it that just don't make a lot of sense to me um, as far as who we play, when we play them, how much we play them. Uh, but this part is not, I don't think that out of the ordinary to see Memphis this this early. Um, okay. We did it last year, I, and, and I'm sure there were times in previous years. So that part of it, I don't think is that um, uncommon. Okay. You know, you mentioned Carlos Rodriguez, um, nine and six down at Biloxi last year with, hundred. excuse me, 100, <laughs> 152 strikeouts. So, um this is obviously a guy that the Brewers are keeping an eye on. He's a number eight in the in the organization as far as um, prospects go. Um, making his second start, third appearance. Um, what are you looking for out of him tonight in this short I think, stint? Yeah, I think the big thing for him is he's walked a few guys in each of his first two outings. He's got all the pitches. He's, he's one of those guys that's not overpowering with his fastball. He, he's just got the wide array of pitches, typically has good command. Um, and the walks have hurt him in his first couple of outings, not the first time that a young pitcher new to AAA would have a little bit of a get the feet wet period. Um, so I, I think he's going to be fine. He's got he's got all the ingredients. He, he works really hard off the field. He wants to be great. Uh, he and along with the sound of last year, Robert Gasser were the Brewers co minor league pitchers of the year last season. And we saw Carlos for just one outing the final week of last year. So he is very new to triple a he's only 22 years old so it might take a little bit but he's got he's got all the ingredients and i think tonight it's just a matter of being in the strike zone and if you get if you get burned with with hits because you're throwing so many strikes that's a better problem to have than creating problems with it's just jeff ham of the nashville sounds joining us here on main street sports today presented by toa of columbia jeff we appreciate it, man, and um, look forward to seeing you when we see you. How's that? And as the as the president of the Jeff Hinn Fan Club, 
<laughs> just want to tell him to be safe, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he can hear us. No, I think we lost him. So um, let's go ahead and get to a break, producer Mark. And when we come back, it's um, time to talk a little Braves, I guess. Let's do it. Yep. Whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, when it comes to your performance, don't settle for anything less than excellence. We're proud to announce that Mid-Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic is now Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia, where we are redefining sports medicine and orthopedics. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance's team of expert sports medicine physicians understands the unique demands of your body. TOA Columbia specializes in personalized orthopedic care, offering state-of-the-art treatments for everything from sports injuries to joint replacements. Learn more at toacolumbia.com. Custom Stone Handler supplies over 600 distributors and suppliers with quality stone products. Along with River Stone, we produce and distribute over 100 building, landscape, and other bulk products. Our goal is to provide quality products, service, and partnerships to ensure our customers' success. We firmly believe that the measure of any person or company is how they treat other people and customers. Give them a call at 931-490-4990 or visit customstonehandlers.com. Nashville Sounds Baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, firework shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. With Lee Company technology, the best handymen are hands-off. Lee Company techs have been using visual findings and other smart technology tools for years to add transparency and virtually take customers along. You see what we see, whether we're in a crawl space or on a roof. With Lee Company, technology helps us help you, no matter what's happening in the world or at your house. Piggly Wiggly, located in Neely's Mill Shopping Center, is Columbia's locally owned and operated Cost Plus 10 grocery store dedicated to serving the community with low prices and smiling faces. Piggly Wiggly offers fresh, hand-cut meats daily as well as daily hot plate lunches from their deli counter. You're certain to see smiling faces and a helping hand when you're here at Piggly Wiggly. Come by and check out our fresh produce, high-quality meats, and more. Down home, down the street, we'll see you at the Pig. We thrive under the lights. A city of performers. Putting on one heck of a show. Headlining night after night. Welcome to Smashville. April 12, 1955, pinch hitting for Warren Spahn in the eighth inning. Chuck Tanner homers on the first pitch he sees as a major leaguer. His solo shot was followed by a Hank Aaron RBI triple and a Bobby Thompson sacrifice fly to rally the Milwaukee Braves past visiting Cincinnati 4-2. Tanner went on to a lackluster playing career but managed 17 full seasons with the White Sox, Athletics, Pirates, and Braves, winning the 79 World Series with the We Are Family Pirates. That was this day in Braves history. We're not going to talk a whole lot about yesterday's results. 
other than to say that Luis Guillorme made his Braves debut on the mound. That's utility infielder Luis Guillorme making his Braves debut on the mound. Um, it was not a good day. It was not a good day. It started bad and got worse. <laughs> and um, yes. for, I, for everybody. And, and I think, you know, on paper, Alan Winans versus the Mets sounded good. I think he made his major league debut against the Mets last year in a spot start and was really brilliant in that one. I think he won a couple of starts against the Mets last year. Uh, he's a former Mets farmhand, but he had not thrown in nine days. Mm. And mm. I don't know why they why they threw him yesterday anyway. I don't know why you would have just thrown Freed. Was it Freed today? Yes, because Wine was scheduled for for Wednesday, Wednesday when it rained out. All right. Yeah. So why would you not just push him and be done? I mean, I know that he hadn't pitched in nine days. Like, I get that, but like, well, I mean, you could have just as easily sent him back down too. Sure. I mean, there, that's it's. I, I, I don't. When that was, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the situation was, but like I said, he 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 kind of got knocked around a little bit. The Braves made some uncharacteristic. Yeah, the, I think defensive miscues as well. I, I just it just didn't look like. It looked like one of those rare days when they just weren't ready to play. Yeah, where nobody wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah, and it, and the crazy thing, even for the best teams, those sometimes. I mean, that's the way I'd look at it. Is sometimes them, those days do just happen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if I don't necessarily, you know, if it's gonna happen. I guess everybody having that day on the same day <laughs> is probably yeah. better than yeah. you know everybody having it one day at a time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, get it out and get it out the way and, and on April eleventh. Yeah, move on and go to Miami and sweep. Since we don't have to worry about seeing Ryan Weathers after he picked up his first victory a couple of days ago, so we don't have any sentiment, no Miami. sentimentality as it relates to the Marlins. Go down there and take three, and then he picked yep. up his first victory in Yankee Stadium. Yes, that's good stuff. Where his dad played in '96. I knew his dad was a Yankee at one point. Yeah, yeah. he's one and one. So well, yeah, that first victory. He was, he was almost everything at one point. Yeah, well, yeah, he is a long he's Wikipedia a, page. He's a, he's a cheat code on immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't you, know, if you don't know, just, try just throw to David yes, Weathers. You got, you got a pretty good shot. <laughs> That's wild. Um, no better news for the Astros. You yesterday. know, uh, no is the simple answer. But you guys know me. I'm a, I'm a glass half full guy. And I loved what I saw from Gray Kessinger on the mound yesterday for Houston. He comes in in the bottom of the eighth. Speaking of position players, pitch. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where, that's where I was going. He comes in the bottom of eighth and gets a one, two, three inning. Now, the only bad part about that is, yeah, he's a third baseman. Uh, <laughs> you love what you see out of the guy. And matter of you fact, just don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's what I was going to mention with, with uh, Atlanta's situation. Uh, outside of the viral uh, content that could come of it, there's uh, there's two ways a position player pitching is, is going to go. It's either really good or really bad. Yeah. And for both of our teams yesterday, it was on the very bad. Houston, yep. they gave up nine runs in the bottom of the first. The good news about baseball – is unless you are there working the game or you just have to be at the stadium for some reason, you give up nine runs in the first inning. Guess what? We're just, you know, you got to tune in the rest of the day. Just chalk that one up to a loss and just uh, just move on. Well, I guess in the glass half full vein, you gave up nine runs in the first inning, but you only gave up four the rest of the way. Hey, now that's that's a little something. And three of them came in the seventh. So, uh, I mean. Before Kessinger, the yeah. fireballer got on the mound. So. so you bounce back a little bit. Yep. Uh, and that's the crazy part. And I don't know how the end of the season is going to turn out uh, standings-wise. But as it sits right now, by the, just the standings alone, that's not a horrible loss in the sense that Kansas City is playing so well. They, uh, that including was their seventh, eight, including eight and two at home now. And that was their seventh straight win. So, yeah. yeah. So they're – Again, I don't know. At the end of the season, they could be at the bottom of the standings, and you're saying, man, that was a really bad series for us. But right now, it's obviously, it's more you're worried about how bad Houston played. But 
you got to give Kansas City a little props too. The other bad news as we uh, talked over lunch today is they got a big series looming. They're right back into a series with the Rangers, luckily at home, but versus the Rangers this weekend. Yeah, you, you know, Jeff in the last segment talked about scheduling. It's interesting that Houston and Texas just played, what, four this past weekend? Yep. Because it was a wraparound yeah, series. Yeah, it was Thursday to Monday, I yeah. think. Thursday, Friday. No, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's right, right, Friday to Monday. Yeah, and yep. now you're coming right back. So, I mean, if there's any bad blood lingering from that last series, it's not getting a whole lot of time to go away. I was going to say, I think Houston's problems are kind of beyond that, and uh, I haven't read them, but there's a couple articles about the pitching is basically as bad as it's been in 10-plus years. Is Valdez hurt? Valdez is hurt, which is why they called up the uh, prospect the other day. Oh, yeah. So they've they've kind of – They've been scrambling a little bit. Hot sauce, Not the hottest prospect. Not the hottest prospect. No. Uh, Losing hot sauce. <laughs> but with that being said, if you weren't in such dire straits, I'd say this would be a classic situation where maybe tonight you just come out and you just plunk one or two guys and just try and get something going just to spark and revitalize it. But the bad news is they are last in the division. They only got four wins, and so they can't really afford to do anything to jeopardize uh, – not getting the win. The only saving grace is the West is not really just uh, running away with uh, Major League Baseball right now. Texas leads, but they're seven and six. The Jeez. Angels, the Angels are somehow six and six, uh, despite no. overrunning second base on a stolen base attempt. Oh my I, gosh! I missed that. Oh, oh my gosh! Ron Washington called it an embarrassment for everybody. They're, and he's right. Yeah, they were down one. They were two. no four two. It was four two in the eighth when Joe Adele takes off for second, and I think there were two outs. Uh, yes, and overslid or just no, overran? no 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 overran over did not slide. Had overran to, had it standing up, just didn't stop on the base. Had the bag standing. Had the up. bag. Mm. Comes off, stunned shortstop tags him. And walks off the field for out number three. It was, a, it, it was embarrassing. It, yeah, it was. I mean, and and and, and, and kudos to Ron either. and kudos to Ron Washington for saying it. And this is what you're gonna get, Angels, all year. <laughs> so if you're gonna huh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, because Wash is gonna call you out on that every time. And that's why we loved him in Atlanta. Yep, and I was just getting ready to uh, uh, group text earlier this week. Someone had joked and said, will, the, will Mike Trout hit more home runs than the Angels win, win games? games? But you could also make the a case yeah. for Alvarez and the Astros right now, the way they've been playing. So, uh, the, like I said, that's the only saving grace is that division is all jumbled up right now. I have more faith in the Astros. You would getting think. it right than I do in the Angels getting it right. And, and I don't even necessarily care if uh, they're – if you told me this was their record right now and they were losing a lot of one-run games and the offense was humming along and they're just pitching is not doing so great, I'd be all right with that, you know. At least, at least give me a little something to uh, get excited about. But they have not played well in the offense. Uh, they're 19 runs uh, to the negative in differential right now. And uh, their, their offense is not uh, living up to its usual standards, which is kind of disappointing. You know who else ain't living up to their usual standards? Scott Boris. Scott Boris. Mm. <laughs> and Jordan Montgomery took that personally. <laughs> the, <laughs> the recent Arizona Diamondbacks free agent signing fired Boris here recently, according to an article by a friend of the show, John Parado on heavy.com. Um, Montgomery was four, one of four Boris cl clients tabbed the Boris four who signed smaller contracts in free agency than expected this offseason. Um, all late, uh, Giants lefty Blake Snell, the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner, by the way, um, Giants third baseman Matt Chapman and Cubs outfielder Cody Bellinger did not come to terms with their current teams until late in spring training. Um, Montgomery, in fact, is still with Arizona's AAA team down in Reno getting ready. I think he's scheduled to start a week from today, maybe, April 19th, after um, pitching for Texas 
last year in in route to that World Series championship. But um, yeah, um, I wonder if the the bloom is off, Mister Boris. Um, Bellinger signed for three years and eighty million, re-signing with the Cubs. Um, Snell signed with the Giants for two years, 62 million. Um, Chapman, 54 million over three years. But again, all of those went really, really late. As I don't know if Boris overestimated their market or, or if folks are just getting tired of dealing with Boris. Both. He just ain't got that juice, the well, same juice I, that he used to have. I mean, look. The, the reason is very simple. Juan Soto, Manny Machado did not play to the level of their contract. Now, they're great players, but neither of those two players played to the level of their contract. And so now... Which, Scott, which it would have been tough to do so. Right. <laughs> he, he put them in an impossible situation and they got paid, but it was at the expense of future players. And I'm sorry, but that's no longer an option. You're not going – if Scott Boris says you're worth this, you're probably not. Because this, me guy, once. this guy clearly doesn't know. So Well, or he does know, but he's just trying to get his guy the last dollar. And I don't know that it's always worth it to get the last dollar. No. When you're talking about the money that you're talking about, particularly. Right. So let's take a break here as we have reached the top of the hour and gone a little past it here on Main Street Sports Today, presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia. When we come back to the Lee Company Studios, we'll be talking some hoops, one team in particular. Looking forward to this discussion. Stay with us when we come back. We thrive under the lights. A city of performers. Putting on one heck of a show. Headlining night after night. Welcome to Smashville. Whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, when it comes to your performance, don't settle for anything less than excellence. We're proud to announce that Mid-Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic is now Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia, where we are redefining sports medicine and orthopedics. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance's team of expert sports medicine physicians understands the unique demands of your body. TOA Columbia specializes in personalized orthopedic care, offering state-of-the-art treatments for everything from sports injuries to joint replacements. Learn more at toacolumbia.com. With Lee Company Technology, the best handymen are hands-off. Lee Company Techs have been using visual findings and other smart technology tools for years to add transparency and virtually take customers along. You see what we see, whether we're in a crawl space or on a roof. With Lee Company, technology helps us help you, no matter what's happening in the world or at your house. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods here in Columbia has been outfitting teams, officials, and anybody else from T-ball to college for 50 plus years. Be sure and check them out at 931-388-8060 or online at jonesandlang.com. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods, the look of a winner. Zion Christian Academy, zioneagles.org or 931-388-5731. You can schedule your appointment. Go toward their campus. It is beautiful over there and you're definitely going to want to see it. Again, it's zioneagles.org. Give them a call, 931-388-5731 and schedule your tour today. Piggly Wiggly, located in Neely's Mill Shopping Center, is Columbia's locally owned and operated Cost Plus 10 grocery store dedicated to serving the community with low prices and smiling faces. Piggly Wiggly offers fresh, hand-cut meats daily as well as daily hot plate lunches from their deli counter. You're certain to see smiling faces and a helping hand when you're here at Piggly Wiggly. Come by and check out our fresh produce, high-quality meats, and more. Down home, down the street, we'll see you at the pig. 
Nashville Sounds baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, firework shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. The second hour of the weekend update here on Main Street Sports today, presented by TOA of Columbia. Maurice Patton, Wade Neely, Chris Yao coming to you from the Lee Company Studios here in Columbia. And question, why does Big Blue Nation hate Mark Pope? Man, that, that is a good question, but does uh, it not Turn feel... your microphone off. Oh, we did that. We'd like, to, we'd like to be able to hear you. It is on. Well, it's, it, was, it's it must have been muted lines, because yeah. we couldn't hear you. So try it again. How about now? No. Just tap it one time on the bottom. There we go. Uh-huh. There, you go. there you go. No, no. Oh, you know, now say what you let me, let me get uh let me get situated here. But yeah. Okay. It feels like everybody hates this hire. Anybody that's a Kentucky quote unquote I fan, don't right? I think it feels like. <laughs> I know about, I can count on one hand the number of sane or rational Kentucky fans in my life. And they might be the only five that exist mm-hmm. uh, because everybody else is pretty much bashing this hire from top to bottom. It seems like the national media at large is kind of almost taking the stance of, Hey, I think this could be a good fit, but Kentucky's saying, oh, no, no, this is not necessarily what Big Blue Nation wanted. And here we are, and it's one of those just unfortunate situations where a guy's walking in. We knew it was going to be lofty expectations, but before you even get on campus, you're already kind of uh, hated by a segment of the fan base at this point, it seems like. A large segment. <laughs> mm. and, and I think – I think it's expectations, and and we'll get a little bit more into that here in a bit. But, I mean, I don't think Kentucky ever expected to hire the coach from Brigham Young University under any circumstance. Well, I mean, on Tuesday, Blake Lovell said that he was an option. You know, he threw out the name. And, and, and you know, obviously as a backup to – the three certainly as a fallback yeah but i i mean i understand that he's never won a regular season or conference championship he's never won a game in the ncaa tournament but he's been at byu he had them in the top 20 this year and byu is in the are they in the big conference previously wcc obviously getting ready uh, or became Big 12 this year. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So but they were WCC before. So when they were the bulk WCC, of it, the bulk of that, around. that was Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Okay. All right. Hell of a league is think when those three. Again. Uh, right. I mean. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm speaking and, to that point there. It's in, in Utah Valley prior to BYU. So, I mean, it's not like. He's had the opportunities. Um, I think I think there are a lot of parallels that can be drawn between Kentucky hiring Mark Pope and Tennessee hiring Kim Caldwell. Uh, to some degree, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the difference being that, you know, Kim Caldwell has had success at a very much higher clip than – than this guy, but yeah. but you know, I, I I don't think it's a terrible hire. Here here's the thing: one, he's a Kentucky guy. He knows the program. He knows the 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 lore, and all of the people that matter like it. And that's the don't. That's the thing, though, that kind of gets me about this. I mean, again, he is them. The fans, the fans of Kentucky. They are not excited about a guy who isn't 
to Nick Saban. And they weren't they weren't going to be excited about Scott Drew either. I mean, they would have taken it and been like, okay, let's go. But So it was all or nothing for Hurley then? I think so. From a fan standpoint? I think I think most of their fans thought they could get Hurley because they're I Kentucky. think Kentucky fans thought they could get anybody they wanted to. And they and they realized. wanted yeah. Uh, I saw a quote today, and I don't know if this is true, from Kentucky Sports Radio that Mitch Barnhart said that the coaching pool was more of a puddle. And Well, I think that's fair when you look at, you know, Hurley made it pretty clear Monday night he wasn't going nowhere. Or more specifically, Mrs. Hurley wasn't going anywhere. The, yeah, um, that's, the big, that's the big problem. I, I think the I, question is this. The question a lot of the fans have is, wasn't this higher there next week? Why not kick some more tires? Why not throw some more money at Billy Donovan? Because as I think as we talked to Blake about, you get to a point where you can't get turned down. And I think maybe after Drew and Hurley and Donovan, Oops. maybe – they call Oates. I mean, Oates I think I think they had gotten to that point where, you know, we need to get – we need a yes. We don't need any more no's. We need a yes. I mean, it's like the guy going to the prom. I I, I need somebody to say yes. I, I, I can't. I can't take tur getting turned down anymore. And that's the crazy thing with, with searches, especially obviously the big-time searches, right? Uh, sometimes, in your mind, you're willing to take – a lesser quote unquote lesser candidate in on your hot list or whatever just to just get to get the done. yes just for to get it done and just to kind of keep your cachet if you will right. hey we don't get turned down when mm -hmm. we when we make an offer we get accepted uh we we only made one offer and yeah it was accepted and yeah. uh did, did i see that right though that they did throw i mean they did supposedly throw a massive contract at uh hurley was it 100 million? Is that what I saw? It, it was a, a very, very large. I think it was 11 million a year. The number that I saw was 11 million a year. Now, I don't know that that was confirmed. I don't know how true it was, but that was the number I saw. And so that, that, that's an absurd number. So, that, so, I mean, think about this, right? If I don't know how you turn that down. Apparently, the boardwalk is too important. I mean, the biggest thing for me, eleven million a year. She can go back. She could fly there every day. And every day, <laughs> she could. Every yeah. Day. So uh, with with UConn and with Hurley, obviously, uh, yes, the money was out there. And so, a couple of takeaways on that, at least for me, is you can rest easy if you're the administration at Kentucky. Hey, we threw the biggest number possible at the best coach right now. And if he says no, we did everything we could. That point number one. But number two, with Hurley specifically, kind of gets into that situation, right? He is – they're not – the statue is not out in front of the building just yet. But they're already maybe contacting some local artists and saying, hey, get ready. We got a statue for this guy coming. Mm -hmm. Why would you leave that – other than, yeah, obviously money and potentially a small step up in reputation because UConn is – Slowly, I mean, well, maybe not even slowly. They're thrusting their way well, into I mean, that uh, combo well, as well. Now. Right, because when you say a small step up in reputation, a small step up from the two-time defending national champion. So it gets back to that age-old question: Do you, I mean, do you want to stay and just be the guy forever? I mean, he's basically minted for life right now at UConn, right? I mean, obviously, we we, we thought that about Calipari too. But, but I mean, Jim, who? Yeah, I mean. It, Calhoun is far in UConn's rearview mirror at this point. It, it's Hurley's world up there, and everybody's living in it. And, man, he's, he's got a great setup. So it was crazy because it seemed like, at least on social media chatter over the last couple of days, that, yeah, he declined it pretty flatly after that first overture. But then once that number kind of got out there, it seemed like he at least said, well, how, how much money did you say? Wait a minute, you said what? Yeah, just just <laughs> enough to, and that's kind of what you got to do, right? You at least got to throw a number out to make him say no at that point. And the the, the point, uh, final point on the search, I guess, is kind of like uh, Blake touched on, and we discussed. 
you don't want to get turned down too many times. What happens if you wait another week? Uh, I think the Bulls are now clinched, maybe even the sixth seed, which would put them out of the play. So they're now in the official playoffs. So, you know, how long of a waiting game are you willing to play for a guy that ultimately may end up saying no anyway? And then who and, knows what happens? Then? And the X factor to that is the transfer portal is not waiting no. for Kentucky to hire a coach. No, they're not. But, you know, it's year one's going to be kind of tough either way. So you just kind of have to, you know, you're going to have to figure it out in year one and hope that you can fix it in year two. AP headline from nine hours ago, Pope will travel to Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and Singapore in longest trip of uh, papacy. Keith Pointer from Louisville. That's a heck of a recruiting swing off the bat. Mm. <laughs> I see what you, I see what you did I, there. You know, that's the thing is you said white smoke earlier, and I'm like, that's mm -hmm. that's uh, the, the jokes will write themselves. Absolutely. <laughs> um, here, here's here's one thing that ain't no joke. On a scale of one to ten, how hot is the seat? that Mitch Barnhart occupies. This is... <sighs> because here's the deal. The way this thing is being framed is, and I don't know if it's fair or not, but it, I saw it from two or three different folks on social media last night. You ran off a Hall of Fame coach. He and, didn't run him off though. He did not I, run them off. I, I, I'm, I, that is that is the toxicity of Big Blue Nation right there. The fans, the boosters, ran John Calipari off, and Mitch Barnhart's going to pay for it. Did you see the report about their two biggest boosters in NIL at Kentucky? A former gubernatorial candidate attempted to use Oscar Tshibwe in a political ad, and Calipari told her no, and they took all of their money out of the NIL fund because he didn't want the kid to have to deal with that. With yeah, that. put up with that. Uh, I gained a lot of respect for John Calipari when I read that. I mean, a lot. Of respect that was a that was big for me but that's the toxicity here's the thing say what you want to about kentucky basketball if mark stoops wins 10 games and makes the college football playoff it won't matter that's you're probably right honestly well that, I don't think that's he's going that, to. That's yeah. But if he was to win ten games yeah. and make the college football playoff, what would it? It's it's twelve teams now, right? Exactly. So, but I mean, that's got to that's got to be what Mitch Barnhart is hoping for because I mean, <laughs> that, that man, he, he has football to work. Yeah, yeah. You, needing Kentucky football to work is really a tough place for a Kentucky athletics director to <laughs> yeah. be, though. So. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of which, and Yao may be in the weeds even more on this, as he's prone to do, mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, not a conspiracy theory, but connect the dots. Some folks had speculated that, yeah, we obviously see Calipari depart, that he maybe himself made one last overture for this mega contract, or, or he essentially was, there was a lot of friction between him and Barnhart, and he kind of, by offering one last potential offer for an extension, was maybe kind of somehow uh what's the word i'm looking for kind of poisoning the well almost and saying hey if you turn me down then obviously he essentially it sounds like he knew he was had the arkansas offer so he makes one last overture to barnhart and then now he kind of it's perfectly calculated almost that he magically ends up arkansas smelling like a rose and now we're sitting here and all of the chatter and all of the ire of the internet and obviously big blue nation is on Barnhart, as you mentioned, to your point, the seat, I don't have a number for you, but it's probably at least five plus, I would think, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and it's on the higher side of five I mean, it's going to be seven or eight maybe. Um, and let him catch an exhibition loss to some random <laughs> team uh, to start his tenure, and then we'll really see what happens.
the thoroughbreds, Kentucky State comes in and yeah, wins. Yeah, let, let, let Georgetown get in there again <laughs> and win a game, and we'll Oof. really see what happens. But uh, uh, And then as soon as I was thinking about all this process, Yao comes back and he makes a great point, and I'm sitting here wondering, yeah, what happens to Barnard if Kentucky football? I mean, <laughs> if magically they made a run and won the national championship or got to the you know Final Four in football, like – do you really care at that point who your bas- how your basketball team? I mean, I know they're quote unquote a basketball school, but would you really care at that? Point? But but at that point, Mitch gets to stand up and say we are a football school. Yeah, you could. Yeah, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, There's so. a number of ways the the PR game can be battled here, and I do feel bad for Pope. Obviously, man. On paper, you obviously are thinking, okay, I don't want to replace Calipari, right? And it kind of reminds me also, as you mentioned with Tennessee, it reminds me of the Alabama situation with football with Saban. And there was a lot less, uh, which, again, I don't dive in the weeds super deep on the internet, but it seemed like a lot less backlash with the boar coming in than I was maybe originally anticipating. This is exactly kind of what I was almost anticipating with Alabama Alabama, uh, that we're seeing play out right now. And it stinks because, obviously, he is one of their own. I mean, he had success as a player, and he's got a solid track record as a coach, even though he doesn't have a few key distinctions on his resume. Absolutely. Um. Y'all, we got Dean Kakinos in the green room. We have made him wait too long already. So let's take a break. Let's come back here on Main Street Sports today, presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia. And let's talk Nashville Cats 3.0 when we come back. Whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, when it comes to your performance, don't settle for anything less than excellence. We're proud to announce that Mid-Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic is now Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia, where we are redefining sports medicine and orthopedics. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance's team of expert sports medicine physicians understands the unique demands of your body. TOA Columbia specializes in personalized orthopedic care, offering state-of-the-art treatments for everything from sports injuries to joint replacements. Learn more at toacolumbia.com. Custom Stone Handler supplies over 600 distributors and suppliers with quality stone products. Along with River Stone, we produce and distribute over 100 building, landscape, and other bulk products. Our goal is to provide quality products, service, and partnerships to ensure our customers' success. We firmly believe that the measure of any person or company is how they treat other people and customers. Give them a call at 931-490-4990 or visit customstonehandlers.com. With Lee Company Technology, the best handymen are hands-off. Lee Company Techs have been using visual findings and other smart technology tools for years to add transparency and virtually take customers along. You see what we see, whether we're in a crawl space or on a roof. With Lee Company, technology helps us help you, no matter what's happening in the world or at your house. Piggly Wiggly, located in Neely's Mill Shopping Center, is Columbia's locally owned and operated Cost Plus 10 grocery store dedicated to serving the community with low prices and smiling faces. Piggly Wiggly offers fresh, hand-cut meats daily as well as daily hot plate lunches from their deli counter. You're certain to see smiling faces and a helping hand when you're here at Piggly Wiggly. Come by and check out our fresh produce, high-quality meats, and more. Down home, down the street, we'll see you at the Pig. We thrive under the lights. A city of performers. Putting on one heck of a show. Headlining night after night. Welcome to Smashville. Nashville Sounds Baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. 
Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, fireworks shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. The weekend update continues here on Main Street Sports today. I'm Maurice Patton. That's Wade Neely. And that is former Tennessee Valley Viper Chris Yao hey, over there with his own camera I, shot. I forgot that uh, this is green. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, see through. <laughs> Lord. Former kick returner. There we go. The Valley Vipers. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he didn't get tackled up against the net like CJ Johnson did a few years ago. But, um, Joining us now is Nashville Cats head coach, Dean Kikinos. Dean, does that jersey look vaguely familiar to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. It brings a lot, bring back uh, a lot of really great memories, actually. Uh, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of victories in that building. And, uh, you know, Chris was there to see most of them and, and critique most of them. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yeah. until you it was uh it. yeah we had a lot of good players there and uh it was really one of the best stops i've ever had in this deal and uh coaching the real football and just in general a great was, great city to live in uh, we love nashville and uh it's, it always holds a big place you know in my well, we heart. have answered we've answered one question yes yeah he does remember <laughs> <laughs> But see what coach what coach Coquinas doesn't know is it was never really personal for him. I just wanted Coach Seleski to have the job, and they didn't give it to him. <laughs> and so, because I, I mean, I had I had a, a little personal relationship with Coach Seleski, and so when Dean got it, I was like, ah, oh, this guy sucks. And then, and then, you know, they all they did was go win it all. There you go. <laughs> and and yeah, he's he's so, like, okay. So here, here here's the deal, guys. So you, when you do this, you, we teach players to avoid just vo you know. Blocked out the noise, and so and we kind of did that with Chris. And no, no, in all fairness, no, no, that's okay. We we do the same thing here. Don't feel bad. Yeah, we block out the noise with Chris a lot, Dean. So um, no, what, he was. What, hey, look, he, he he's an excellent writer. He really wrote some good pieces on us, and we appreciate everything he did. It's all in good fun, uh, but it was all I'm part of the experience there. Coach. Yeah, passionate, <laughs> passionate. I love it. Passionate. Good stuff. Dean, what what I'm trying not to hold against you is you are a former teammate of Pets Perdudos. Oh no, yeah, that's yeah. my guy. Yeah, <laughs> he he's super. I think the world of Pet and um, you know, welcome back to Nashville. You as you said, you spent a lot of time here. Um, former assistant coach at the high school level with both Brentwood Academy and Ensworth, yeah, in addition yeah. to your um, arena ball exploits, but um. Did you ever think you would find your way back to arena ball? Well, not really. So I never left Nashville. I, I you know, I came here to work with Pat and uh, in 2004 um, when he, you know, we were owned by the Titans and, and then the second version of the cats uh, was, was beginning to get launched. So, and, you know, I moved here and my, I, we stayed and it's my community. Now we raised my, I'm raising my family here and, uh, but yeah, no. When I got out, when when I it was about five years ago, or so that I coached my last game in arena football. Never thought I would get back. I was very very happy uh, at Brentwood Academy, then Ensworth, and uh, had the opportunity to be the head coach uh, at Knoxville Catholic for about five months. And I had to step down for personal reasons, but uh, I was very very excited just to be in the high school private sector. Some really good football, but. Uh, I'm really excited about this opportunity. Uh, we, we got a kind of a special thing going here and to do it the third time and be part of it again is, is pretty neat. You guys started preseason workouts, I guess this past weekend. So you've, you've had a little time to be around the guys. You guys have had a little time to be around you. What are you seeing that you like to this point as you guys point toward your April 27th season opener? Yeah. Well, I, I really like the players that we've gathered, you know, over the, you know, it's been a short, I think it's important to know it's been a really fast turn. Uh, 
you know, I wasn't sure I was going to do this. And after meeting with Coach Fisher and, and the group, uh, it took a, it took a few meetings. But you know, once I realized that Jeff was going to be all in and we'll do this, you know, we agreed. And, and it was January, I think, before we even got launched uh, for me officially. So fast turn, but I think the biggest thing I did here was hiring uh, Adam Shackelford. Uh, yeah. Chris will know him. Uh, <laughs> one of the best arena football games ever played, you know, and a lot of respect for him over the years. Uh, is what he's done for all the stops he's had, and he's been a big, big part of helping me build this team. Now, I've been out five years. I've been – I had, haven't had anything to do in arena football or indoor football, and getting reconnected with with Adam and 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 the players, we built a pretty talented roster. So I think I'm most excited about the players, which I always am, because the players are the reason why we do it and why you win or lose. Indeed, speaking of the players, uh, kind of coming into this new role, obviously you've been at, around the game uh, for a long, long time, but. With such a new kind of endeavor, have you got a full grasp of the talent that you have on your hands? And if you ha don't have it now, how long will that process potentially take in your mind? Oh, we got a lot. We got a lot of it. It's I think we have everything we need. It's just not many of them have played indoor or arena football. So that's the challenge right now. It's teaching them a game, teaching them how to play this game. I think that's going to be our biggest challenge. Um, but the talent's here. That's a good blend of different type of athletes and, uh, we just got to, we got to, we're on a fast track to try to get these guys up to speed in the real football. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. Chris was, uh, I'll, I'll save that question for you, but he was kind of uh, giving us a rundown at lunch today of, of some of the guys on your roster. And um, he may ask one or two questions about particular players, but I guess in your mind, any particular unit group uh, that you guys are going to maybe really hang your hat on uh, either to start this season or as the season goes along? Uh, well, you know, I think as Chris could tell you, it, arena football, for me, that's always been pass rush. That What number you were in there, Chris? Nine? No, I'm not wearing Eric, Eric's number or, okay. or Terrence Moore's. This is Chris Bocage jersey. Okay, Bocage, yeah. So, but we always we always built our teams with a pass rush, and I, I'm very excited with the group we have here uh, and, you know, in the back end as well. And, and, and offensively, you know, we're pretty good up front, really deep there, and we have three – a deep stable of quarterbacks as well. And, you know, the biggest challenge there is uh, none of them play arena football. We, you know, uh, Ramon Atkins has played in the indoor league, but uh, we're pretty thick everywhere right now. And, um, you know, I think it's going to just be competitive. We'll see what we got here in, in another week or so. Well, and I was going to ask you about your quarterbacks because as, as we all know at this point in football in general, it's a quarterback-driven game, but no, nowhere more important than in the indoor game, uh, particularly arena football. And, you know, you've got some guys with, with a little bit of experience indoors, but, you know, when, you, when you've got guys as talented as Cooper Callis and Charlie Brewer who come out of, you know, one of them's a former Power 5 guy, both of them played in the CFL, it seem like you've got some guys who who can really compete and be high level guys at this you know in this iteration of AFL. Yeah, they really are, Chris. You, you just nailed it. They're super. They're all of them had great careers in the big field, and different types of talent. But at the, at the end of the, uh, the day, they're all really super talented quarterbacks. You know, Ram Ramon's been indoors a little bit, and uh, uh, it's exciting to see these, these level of players here. <laughs> All in one place, you know. I, you know, you go through the years that, that I've done this. Outside of my stop here with the Cats, and when we had Sterner and Smoker and a lot of those guys, uh, this is pretty deep level quarterback play we we have right now. It's been pretty competitive. Well, I mean, Ramon was what offensive rookie of the year in the yeah. IFL, you know, in twenty twenty two. So clearly, some experience and, and guys who who understand, you know. If for nothing else, he can teach those other guys a little bit of an insight of the indoor game. Of course, when you've got Adam Shackelford, as you mentioned, Coach, I mean, this is a guy who's got more rings than I've got fingers. And and so, one, how did you get Adam Shackelford to come to Nashville and coach with you? <laughs> well, Billy, we're, we were friends long before that game. Uh, you know, when I worked here with the Cats, uh, you know, he was in Louisville and he, mm -hmm. you know, it was arena two when he was down there working the offense, I believe. And, you know, we're here with the Cats and the Titans. But, you know, our season back then, our season ended before the arena two season. And we'd take road trips. We'd, we'd, we'd you know, cut up 
who would go where to recruit to read two players. And I always, you know, I had a Tennessee Valley or Louisville and Adam always had a really good roster down there and mm-hmm. he was good with players and he would come up to our camp here in Nashville, with, you know, we practice over at the sports park, the bubble. Um, and we just been friends, the whole, you know, for since 2004 and a lot of respect for him. And we've kept in contact through the years and, and uh, just an opportunity he came out for the um, coaches convention and, you know, we, we met, took him to lunch and, uh, you know, he want, he, he asked if he'd you know, be interested in working together just in person. Now we're going to do, you know, he's going to help out. And, you know, one thing led to another. And as this thing grew and started to escalate and we started to grow and the support we've been getting has been tremendous. Uh, you know, it just worked out where I think his wife said, okay, you're allowed to go. And once that happened, then, he, he's here helping us full time now. Yeah, well, it was a heck of a get. There's no yeah. doubt. I no mean, doubt. My goodness, what a, what a coaching staff you've put together. Who else is on the staff that? Cause the matter, your friend Cause, our oh. D coordinator, and uh, come on, CJ. Yeah, CJ Johnson. He played for us, and you know Wes Stevens. Wow, we got quite a crew. I got a few of the guys from oh. Ensworth. I had the opportunity to work with some really good football coaches at Ensworth High School. I have two of those guys coming over and helping. One of them, Nick Johnson, played for Coach Fisher with the Rams back in the day. So, so we got quite a connection uh, going, for, you know, with me and Jeff and my former players and coaches and some of his guys. So it's a unique group. You've got Wes Stevens coaching. <laughs> I'm just killing it with you today, man. I love it, Maurice. I covered Wes when he was at MTSU, former McGavick standout. Great dude, man. I'm happy yeah. to know that he's um, – back in it again we had cj johnson on a couple of weeks ago right before he went on his um international trip with his family but uh, i really like the um the ability that you all have had to bring back some former nashville cats some guys who are familiar to the community um and with what you've done with the roster as well as far as um local guys and that kind of thing. I would imagine that's going to really resonate with the fan base. I think so. So that was our goal starting this thing. You know, we want to try to build it inside out with local type players, whether it's they were born here, played high school here, expanded out or came here to play college football. And we've done a pretty good job, I think, in a short period. That's going to continue to grow. You know, because we had the open trial at Lipscomb Academy a few weeks ago in over 100 guys showed up for that. And, you know, right now we're pulling guys back for a second look. So, you know, I, I think we'll just continue to keep growing. I, getting the national search going and getting indoor players coming here that have been in the arena, and, and Chris can tell you, you know, until you've been in an arena and played, it's it's just different. It's, it's like, you know, I think the first thing you learn is the walls over, I don't know how many years now, Chris, 40 years, uh, they haven't lost one fight or about no, so they win lost. every time <laughs> and right. having guys that have been in the arena is was important to us too and guys like ramon and, and a few of the other guys but communities you know i live here this is my community and we're all about that first and we'll continue to grow within as as we this program uh, this franchise starts to grow um dean kakinos coach of the nashville cats joining us here on main street sports today Dean, you talked about two of your quarterbacks having played on the big field. And, you know, obviously Chris has all of the indoor football knowledge in this room. I've seen a little bit. But for the quarterbacks, that compressed area and obviously the compressed decision-making process that goes with that, how tough is it for those guys to, you know, get acclimated to – the relative lack of time compared to the big field that they have to work with. It, it's, it's difficult. And if anybody tells you that they're not, they haven't been in it. So I think the biggest thing is spacing, right? Everything's, everything's not only faster, but the spacing changes, the angles change. You know, when you play quarterback, you see it inside out and everything now is happening in, instead of, you know, a three step pull, sometimes it's a one step pull and, and things start to break down. So, Adjusting to the spacing on your on your quarterback drops, the routes, and then just the width of the field uh, is the big in the throws. You know the type of throws are different. You know over the years, you know some of the best quarterbacks in real football were 
they weren't strong on guys. You know, they were accurate guys. Guys get the ball out fast. They can throw a little softer ball, all different types of balls. So I think that it really is just the mental thing. That it's, you know, they're playing at the speed of sound here sometimes. And when, when things go, their mind goes too fast. And I think the biggest thing we're trying to do is slow down the game for them mentally. And once they do that, then their physical ability takes over. We had we had a player, Kevin Aiken, get off the NFL field in Huntsville when I was there, when I left Nashville. And Kevin had, you know, no experience indoors. It was a five-year pro in, in NFL and CFL. Quick release guy, um, tough guy, smart guy. Boy, he was, he was awful the first two or three games. And, and But I knew he had so much talent. Once the game slowed down for him, I knew he'd be excellent. And he went on to play, I think, five or six years for me and won a lot of football games. So I'm He's hoping to do now. that with all of these guys we have here. He's here now. You should just have him come over and tell those guys. <laughs> yeah, hey, he's, so he's been here. He, he's, he's been to the tryout, and he's, he came to our opening awesome. camp. So he's been around. So That's he'll fantastic. continue to come around. So it's great to have him and just share his story, his journey. He's been a huge help. we got a lot of guys like Dan Alexander has been around. I was about to ask about him because yeah, he lives you know, up Scott here Scott Templefelt has been around. We've had a lot of guys pop in to, just to say hello. It's crazy how – all those guys you think about from that from that team that you were a part of and those teams in the early 2000s never left. It's it's crazy how many of them are still here. Well, and he is. Right. I mean, including <laughs> you. It, it's just, it just goes to show that, you know, it really is. in Nashville and the Middle Tennessee area really has always been a great place to be. It's, it's got to be good here. for recruiting, too, by the way. Yeah, oh, it's, oh, it's great for recruiting. It's been a, it's been one of the easiest stops recruiting wise, but, and I think once you're in Nashville and you've been part of it, it's just different here. It's, it really is a community. It's a welcoming community. And once you're in it, you all, most of those guys I just mentioned, you know, came played here, coached here and never left. So, and I think one thing about arena football in most sports and most professions, once you develop that bond and especially when you go through a journey where you, you, we've had, we're fortunate enough to win two championships with a lot of these guys with me, it's a lifetime bond. You know, I've known a lot of these guys started as players like cosplay for me in 2000, I think four. Mm -hmm. And we've been on a journey through coaching and him playing and coaching with me to high school. We competed against each other in division uh, three, triple a, you know, over the last four years. And, you know, he's like a brother to me and, and so are these other guys, but it's just a thick, you know, bond once you start this thing and, and you, you're close. It's like, the game itself you're in close quarters <laughs> and you get to know each other as men and as people as players and coaches it's been pretty cool hey dean real quick before we get you out of here you were talking about stories and journeys uh i gotta ask which was more fun being an assistant coach down in livingston alabama at west alabama or uh being involved with the berlin rebels uh over in germany those <laughs> berlin are, rebels those are two, a little two different <laughs> set of circumstances right yeah yeah, no, it, it's, I've been, you know, I've been blessed and cursed, I, I guess. And I've, I've got to travel pretty much all over the world. Uh, every stop's been unique and it's been good. I, I loved it at West Alabama when I was there. And, you know, Berlin was, is really cool. It's a cool place. So, um, and some really good football players out there. We've had two, two people, uh, families come in from Germany to visit, visit us here in Nashville already. And, uh, and I've toured, uh, toured them into the high schools here and they have, you know, the people I've met over there have some sons now looking to play in America. So, uh, it never stops, man. You, you make these network and connections and it, it just, uh, you know, it continues to grow. Hey, just because I'll never get to ask anybody this question again, what makes a ger a good German football league player? What makes them special compared to uh, other leagues? <laughs> Swai so beer, bitte. Two beers, please. Okay. <laughs> <It's, All right. laughs> no. So one of the, that's that's a joke over there. That's when you're an American. That's what they teach you. So what makes them? They're they're super athletic to, to begin with, but they're so dedicated mentally and focused. Um, they're very very coachable. You know they they suck it up. They're like a sponge. All the information they can gather, you know, to go with their ability, and they're just all in all the time, wanting to learn the game. And that's that's what I found when I was in, in Germany. Is just the this attention to detail. It's a new sport to them. You know, they grow up playing soccer, and then football comes in. They just want to uh, they want to grow with it and learn with it. So it's been it was a pretty cool experience. Dean Kakino's coach of the Nashville Cats Arena Football League team. They opened their season on Saturday. 
April 7, April 27th, excuse me, at Municipal Auditorium against the Minnesota Myth. And then you got a quick turn, Coach. You go to the Albany Fire, Firebirds that Thursday, May 2nd. Um, next couple of games at home. Well, next game at Municipal and the game after that is at F&M Arena on May 18th against the Georgia Force. The full schedule is on the website, thenashvillecats.com. Be sure and check that out. Coach, appreciate you taking some time with us. Look forward to um, getting out to Municipal and checking y'all out. Thanks, and just, guys. Appreciate and Chris, it too. Yeah. Just look for Chris. He'll be the one in the Nash in the, um, <laughs> in the Tennessee Vibers. Valley Vipers jersey. So, I love it. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you, Dean. When we come back here to the Lee Company Studios on Main Street Sports today, we'll get Chris out of that jersey so you can, well, anyway, so you yeah. can concentrate. Final segment of the week. We'll let you know what we will be paying attention to this weekend when we come back on Main Street Sports Today, presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia. Stay with us. I'm Maurice Patton, and on Main Street Sports Today, we bring you the voices of your favorite teams from preps to pros. Um, otherwise known as the Vot, Mike Keith. The, the bottom line is, we can teach Will Levis woke. I just don't know who's going to work with you on your base stealing now that he lies. <laughs> well, that has nowhere to go but up. And I was just like, oh, guys, not again. Can we just bury that, burn that footage, and not bring it back? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, we'll keep it going past the All-Star break. And uh, looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season plays out. There's always a good story to tell. Can you guess where I am today, Mo? Where, where am I? It's, it's Reece not Smith Reece Smith Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because so anytime you play Chicago, you want to win. That's you, just you got that right, and <laughs> be, line. Be a buzz. You know, when you're walking the dog, you keep the bags that you need for the dog in the bag, and you don't even have to wear it. You can just hold it, which is what I do when I walk the dog. So I think I think the fanny pack probably needed a little rebranding. <laughs> it did. And so, it really did. Um, it, 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 on your show logo, we've got to get a puck in there. There's a basketball. There's a oh. there's a baseball. Maybe mm -hmm. not a puck. How about Mo brandishes a hockey stick? Tune in daily at 2 p.m. on Main Street Media TV. It's the final segment of the weekend update edition of Main Street Sports Today. We're coming to you from the Lee Company Studios here in Columbia. Maurice Patton. Wade Neely, Chris Yao, Sands Jersey. He looks a little, he's, he's back to his old self. Well, right he's now. back to his old self. And because there's no green in the jersey, you're not seeing his background on his chest. So you can actually see Von Braun. Is it Von Braun Coliseum? Is that what it is? What Center. Are Center. Von Braun Center. And this is pre. This is. Uh, all the, all the new stuff. Upgrades. Yeah. Uh, pre probst Arena, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> this is the, the original the OG, yeah, exactly. Um, want to mention before we go any further in this segment at Thomas Ashworth Zero tweeted about 40 minutes ago Jacksonville State leads Arkansas State one nothing in the winner's bracket final after taking the traditional point 1098 to 974. Everyone for JSU bowled a 200 or better. So the Gamecocks, stay cocky, I'll do it one time, um, are bowling for a national championship. And they are currently, uh, they take the second Baker game 248 to 200, now lead the points 455 to 413. Uh, they they uh, split the first two Baker games. So mm -hmm. Obviously, whoever wins the Baker game, if, if Jacksonville wins the Baker games, they'll advance. If they lose, then they'll have to there, – there's some sort of tiebreaker. I'm not sure how that works because we've not lost one yet. We've not lost a Baker's game yet. Well, And this is the winner's bracket final, so 
So this is a double elimination event, it I is. assume? Okay. So win or lose, Jacksonville State is not done. But um, good luck to the Lady Gamecocks. Um, besides this, Chris, what else have you got on your agenda for the week? Oh, you said it's, it's wedding right. season, right? It is, but it's also rivalry weekend for the UFL as Memphis. In Birmingham? Yep. Take the trip down I-22 and okay. they'll take on the Stallions on Saturday. The barbecue battle. The, the Yeah. Yeah. The barbecue battle for sure, and some interesting. Although I guess Arlington and Houston would would say not so fast, my friend. Probably. Right? Yeah. Probably. Do uh, they play this weekend as well? I, I'm not entirely sure. Come on who now. Else, I'm not sure who else plays. In Dude, the NFL this weekend because if, I don't care because I'm only worried about one game. <laughs> oh, Memphis and Birmingham. Memphis and Birmingham. Um, <laughs> it is DC and Arlington on Saturday at. Noon. Uh oh, that one will be on ESPN. Memphis and Birmingham at 6 p.m. at Protective Stadium. That's on Fox. Houston and Michigan up in Detroit at Ford Field. On ABC. Not a barbecue battle, no. by the way. No Sunday at 11 p 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC, and then St. Louis and San Antonio. I guess well, that's uh, not really. Uh, San Antonio is more Tex Mex. They're not. They're mm -hmm. not really worried about smoking meats. Insert before. Charles Barkley joke here. There you oh, go. Oh, or don't. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> I, I literally just watched like four of those clips last night. One of my friends came over to watch a Michigan hockey game, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, "Hey, remember that? Remember those jokes?" And I said, "Oh, well, thanks to the powers of technology, we can pull them up right now." So we we uh, we, we pulled them up. I'm not going to say whether we enjoyed them too much or not, but uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all. You can see the doubleheader on Sunday at 11 and 2 on ABC. You can hear mm -hmm. any of these games on Sirius XM. Some interesting notes from the UFL, though, Mo. Hmm? I don't know. The UFL is now presented by the U.S. Army for $10 million. Oh. That's a pretty good cash influx, right? The U.S. Army spent... $10 million to advertise with the UFL? They have their logo on every jersey and on the field. Yeah. U.S. Army has long been a alt football supporter. Because, I mean, the Steel Dogs had U.S. Army <sighs> patches back in the early 2000s. They just always have been. Um, because, I mean, the, the person who's watching that is probably <laughs> a candidate. Um the cost for a 30 second ad, $65.70, $6,570 for a 30 second national ad on the UFL. And they have. Stop, 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 stop. Y'all realize how many ads you could buy on Main Street Sports today for $6,570? Bingo. All of them. <laughs> Every one. <Yeah. laughs> Exclusively presented by. Yeah. You, so you, just... would be, you would be our US Army. <laughs> we just run four minutes of your commercials. <laughs> the same one, if necessary. Roll it. <laughs> Just loop it. Yeah. Fox and Disney have booked $3.7 million in ad sales through uh, the first eight weeks of the season. So. Wow. That's pretty big. I, I think this well, is. People will watch this, well, good I, spring football. Even, uh, you know, the Stallions game was on ESPN last saturday during the uh the men's final four nine hundred and three thousand viewers i thought that was incredible i mean that's, that's a higher number than i would have anticipated right, almost a million people on a cable channel yeah i mean if it's on broadcast network you kind <laughs> right. of maybe but for it to be on a cable and still Almost a million. That was pretty impressive. So UFL looking good right now. It's pretty cool. That's what I'm going to be doing. And obviously it is wedding season. So I'll be at, uh, I'll be on the ones and twos. Final UFL point. And I, I see this kind of some sad news. Our guy destroying is out the kicker for the, yeah, he, for, he made had a, a neck injury. He made a tackle and hurt him, hurt his neck. So I, done for the year. Done for the yeah. year, apparently. And I was, it was one of those, you know, you're hoping that, uh, it was he's, not that severe, okay. but yeah, he's out for the, the season Ooh. between him and wing, I was uh, that was those two enough was going to be enough at some point this year to get me to tune in to one of the games, and I'm kind of disappointed to hear that now. 
Uh, and and our lineman that caught the thick six. Don't tell me he's out um, now. Well, no, I don't okay. know. I'm just I, saying. That I was was, like, that's the only thing we got to cling on to now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, as long as him and Wing can maybe uh, still keep the thick six connection alive, that's what we that's what, that'll be enough to get me to tune into a game or two this year. You know, um, we've not talked a whole lot of NSC of late. They are off this weekend before they go to enter Miami a week from tomorrow. Could probably use that, huh? With or without Messi, I guess. Uh, Messi should be there for this one. He won't be at the one in Nashville okay. later this year. But, yeah, NSC, all I'll say about that is the natives are getting a little restless. Uh -oh. And there was uh, uh -oh. some preseason chatter about coaching and GM direction. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And it hadn't got off to a great start. Uh -oh. So, don't be surprised oh, that kind of ramps raggy. up in the next couple of weeks. Mm, okay. All right. What else you got going? Other uh, – I'll tell you what. Pretty pumped are, about are this. You going to, are you going to the Blue Jackets tomorrow night? Uh, we'll not be going to the Blue Jackets. Fingers crossed, still going to try and sneak in a, a last second YOLO for the for the playoffs, maybe, <laughs> after the fiasco we discussed on air yesterday. Uh, but I got to give a quick shout out. Uh, Mama Neely and Papa Neely are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary this weekend, hey. which uh, which they're going to despise me for saying that on air. They're, they like to keep, you know, keep that stuff just off the off the radar but it's 40 years uh, it is 40 years. 40 years <laughs> and as, as a few uh i've got a special surprise for they them lined up for them. for this weekend and i'm not going to spoil it here but don't, uh, no don't but because as a, everybody will tell them exactly uh and they're, they're probably watching this right now but i will say this that several people when i've uh informed them i feel a little upset because they are quick to point out they're like yeah, that's a great accomplishment, especially considering they had to raise you for 37 of those years. And I'm just like, could have done without that. Yeah, so we'll, with, be, we'll be hanging with them, watch a little Masters, a little pimento cheese. Uh, it'll be a good weekend. Weather's supposed to be nice, too, so looking forward to it. You, my friend. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, y'all going to ask me what I'm doing? <laughs> no. I, I meant to let it linger a little bit more. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's okay. Y'all got a good look at Mo's face. Hey, I did. Good look at Mo's face, y'all. Hey, I did. I did give you guys a lovely parting gift, though. Monday at two twenty, Chris and Wade will be joined by Virgil Herring to wrap up the Masters. So should be fun. It should I'm be fun. For I'll see if I can pick it up. Probably not from somewhere out in the Atlantic. <laughs> Enjoy, Mo and the Andy. Did you bring the bottle of champagne? Are we going to crack the champagne on the side like it was the ship, the, the cruise vessel? I can't afford that. Well, well, I guess I could have got cheap champagne. If we get that sponsorship money rolling in, we'll all that, be that's six thousand five hundred seventy dollars. We get yeah. those four-minute looping spots. We'll definitely be able to afford a lot of that. Stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but no, I'm um, looking forward to some rest and relaxation and a little. Woodford. That's a good that's a good day right there. Yeah, yeah. So but, but that's uh, that's a good day, but this can be multiple days. It is we're, we're be picking up here. Days. So, so yeah. you'll you'll be seeing my face and Wade all next week, unfortunately, but it'll be nice to get back into it and, and get a little rhythm going. Bob. And then on Friday I'll be done and how are you gonna do this for five straight days? I don't know. I forgot how to talk. No. <laughs> no. All I know is uh, no. that jersey, that's only allowed – today may be the only day that's, that's allowed a, in studio not, next not week. The, well, you know, we'll have some new stuff when Mo comes back, too, hanging up on the walls. It'll be fine. Well, yeah, yeah, go. come back and check us out in, uh, in a week in plus. In a week? And, and this, this place might, might look, look a little, little different, different, huh? Yeah, spruce it up. Oh. Um, so are we going to try to go on the 27th for the I, myth? I will certainly be. I'm going to be in Nashville already. The I, I was going to raise the point, but I forgot they're not playing at Bridgestone anymore. Uh, don't have to worry about a crossover with the Preds okay. as far as arena battle. I uh, also don't have to worry about bundling up with the ice still down. That's right. That too. So uh, man, it gets cold. Yeah, there. I'll be there that weekend. I, I probably will cruise on over to Municipal. I've been there in a while. Yes. yes. No. Y'all. Hold it down. I'll see y'all a week from Monday. 
These guys will be here Monday at 2 o'clock on Main Street Sports Today, presented by the Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance of Columbia. I don't know which studios they will be in, but it'll be the Lee Company studios, wherever it is. So check them out. We'll talk.